Hey everybody, so uh, my name is Aaron Hip. I'm the owner of Adaptive Tuning System. I make barrel tuners that work with your existing muzzle threads. Uh, probably the most used barrel tuner in the Precision Rifle series right now with competitive shooters. But what I'm here to talk to you about today is the new American Rifle Company Coup de Gras action. Uh, I hear a lot of people pronounce this thing kind of funny. They'll say Coup de Grace or what have you, but it's pronounced Coup de Gras. But anyway, um, just got one of these in. I'd actually been working with Ted on, on this for about three years. Uh, Ted's the owner of, owner of American Rifle Company. And I have to say that uh, seeing the final product is just pretty amazing. I've had the prototypes of them in my hands before, but this is the final version. Uh, there's a lot of questions about it. So I wanted to kind of walk through, make this video to walk through what's different about this action. So there's, there's a number of things. So, you know, this is going to take some time, but let's start off first. So typical three lug design. I don't say typical, but it is a three lug design. Uh, the nice thing about it is it's an interchangeable bolt head, a little May 16 extractor. Uh, it's a fat bolt design. So for those of you that are not familiar, here on the this hand, uh, sorry, I'm going to say that because the way the camera is uh, mirroring it, is a standard bolt diameter. And then you can see the bolt diameter of the new coup de gras, which is it's considered a fat bolt design. So I'll try to hold that up there. Uh, it is significantly larger in diameter, but really cool design. So again, we're going to put this away uh, and just walk through a couple things here. So three lug, interchangeable bolt head, easy to take down in the field, firing pin removable. Uh, it is a integral lug, integral lug, integral rail action. Bolt stop, standard. Uh, Ted's bolt stops are some of the most bomb-proof bolt stops I've dealt with, and I have a history of breaking bolt stops from running the bolt back really hard and fast. Uh, so I've been running his nucleus actions for a couple years, and I've had zero issues. And a adjustable trigger hanger. So this trigger hanger is actually really cool. Never seen a trigger hanger like this before, but we'll get into a bit more detail on that here in a little bit. Uh, one of the other innovative things about this action is the extraction options. And I say extraction options because typically on most bolt action rifles, when you lift the bolt, you have a surface here and a surface on your action that interface at an angle. And so at that angle, the bolt lifts, lifts up hits it, and then that causes it to pull the um, the round out of the chamber. It's your extraction cams, your extraction surfaces. So that's the way most actions work. That's why when you have a stuck round in the chamber, you'll see people hitting the bolt up. It's because they're hitting it up so that the bolt can ride along that angled extraction cam surface. Uh, that's what actually pulls the round out of the chamber. This action is different, okay? And so... The way Ted has designed this action is you can still do the standard bolt handle with that will run on the extraction cam surfaces where you know you go up, you hit a 45 degree angle or what have you, and it runs the, the round out of the chamber. But he's come up with something really innovative. And I've messed with this uh, for the past year or so on the various versions of the prototypes and designs. And so the way this works is, let me throw this in here. Ah. Oh, sorry. The, uh, sorry, one of the other things I forgot to mention is it has a mechanical ejector. Uh, so uh, as far as ejecting around, a lot of actions have a spring-loaded pl plunger ejector, which is that little round cylinder that you see in the face of the action or the face of the bolt head. And so when you pull the round out, that spring-loaded plunger pushes your round out. This is the mechanical ejector, and so there is a bar on the inside of the action that as you bring the, the bolt back, it slides in this little groove, and that bar flips the round out. Uh, so the round was only going to go as far as short as you want it to. The harder you run it, the further it's going to fling. The shorter you run it, or the softer you run it, the, the closer it will be to the action. So we'll put this back in here real quick, and we'll walk through how this actually ejects, or I'm sorry, extracts. And so I'm going to put this down on the table now just because it's a little bit easier for me to work with, and you get a little bit better view. But again, on most actions, when you lift it up, the bolt hits this little angled surface here, and that's what causes the round to get pulled out of the chamber. On the coup de gras, you can run it multiple ways. So what you'll notice here is, if I'm going to put my finger on the back of this, this is a spring-loaded, and it's a very heavy spring, so you don't feel it. It's a spring-loaded lever. So think about this like a pry bar. Okay, 
this bolt run, or I'm sorry, this handle runs through the opposite side of the bolt, or throughout the opposite side of the bolt, and it acts like a pry bar on the opposite side of the action. And so what that means is your bolt lift is always going to be the same, right? So you're going to have a little bit of pressure, maybe a heavy round, but you will never have to hammer this bolt up if you have a stuck round. Second to that is, is when you're laying behind the rifle, you have the most mechanical leverage possible to extract around from the action. And that's because the bolt is up and your extraction is from pulling the handle back, right? Because it acts as, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get it here. It acts as a pry bar, right? So inherently when you're laying behind the rifle and you lift the bolt handle up, you can pull this back and the buttstock of the rifle is in your shoulder. So you have more mechanical leverage than you do on any other uh, any other action as far as getting this out. And I've tested this, right? I've taken an oversized round to the point where I've had to put it in and pound the bolt down, right, in order to get it to close. You would not do that on a standard action. You would never get it open. You'd rip, you'd, it would just be catastrophic, right? You'd have to pull the barrel off the action to get it back out. But I've done this and I've got another video out there of me doing this about a year or so ago when I was testing some of the prototypes. Uh, but yeah, again, I pounded the bolt down on an oversized round just to test how well this worked and lifted it up bolt lift was no harder than normal pull it back and because of the the buttstock of the rifle is in your shoulder huge mechanical leverage this pries it out of the action okay now the really cool thing about that is ted offers another bolt handle this bolt handle will work like any other action that you're used to and it has extraction cams uh, sorry i'm doing everything backwards here has the normal extraction cams here that this bolt handle will engage. So this bolt handle will not pivot. This bolt handle is static. It works like any other action. So if for some odd reason you, you decide you don't like this, this bolt handle design, which I don't know why you wouldn't, um, you can get this bolt handle design and it will run just like any other action that you've used. And we'll show switching this out here in a minute how easy it is. So I uh, wanted to cover that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to cover is the trigger hanger. This is by far the most innovative trigger hanger I have ever seen. And so what I mean by that is you have two screws on it. This screw is for securing it in place. This screw is for adjusting the position of the trigger hanger forward and back. And I'm not sure if you can see it on this video, uh, but you have lines on the marks on the action and on the side of the trigger hanger, sorry, I don't have really good light here. You do have laser engraved lines so that you can adjust this back and forth and know exactly where it's sitting so that you can adjust your sear engagement without buying different trigger hangers, right? You can just adjust this trigger hanger. And so how this trigger hanger works is, so a couple things here, let me pull this out. So what you'll notice, hopefully you can see it here is, sorry, I'm gonna have to tilt this up a little bit so I have better visibility. You have these little notches okay on both sides and your trigger pins are actually pointed right they come to a point and they fit in these notches so what happens is you slide the once you pull the screw out you slide the trigger hanger back and out right so to put it back in put it in the the points of the trigger pin sit in these notches and then you slide it forward and then you secure it with this screw okay so really simple Cool concept. In order, the adjustments, and you're going to see something really interesting here. These trigger pins are going to fall out, so I'll get to that in a second. The adjustments are made by this tapered set screw. And so what happens is this tapered set screw rides along this angled surface. And so when you screw this set screw in, it's pushing along that surface, and therefore it's moving the trigger hanger forward and aft. Okay? So that's how this trigger hanger works. The other really nice thing about it is, so I mean, from a competitor's perspective, you know, you have to change out your trigger in the field. It goes down, it goes down into competition because you have a pop primer or something. Uh, it's really easy to do, but this is a permanent adjust. You can have this set already preset and adjusted so that your sear engage engagement's the same every time. The other thing I really like is the way it is designed, and let me make sure that I'm doing this the right way here, is... For any of you that have ever changed a trigger before, you know as well as I do that you end up pounding your trigger pins in, which means you gotta have a bit of a brace um, or a, a little stand to put them on. These trigger pins fit in perfectly. 
No pounding required. Once you put them in. Oh, and look at that. I Stupid me. Just tap them here. Uh, where is this? Sorry. I put it in upside down because, well, I'm trying to do this all on the fly here. We'll put this back in. Uh, where'd they go? Put your trigger pins in. Sorry, guys. Just trying to get this all lined up here. Number one. Sorry. Number two, again, you set them in. I'm going to slide them a little bit. Push it forward. Secure it. Pretty simple to secure. And you're done. Okay. And again, you would leave this a little bit, this one a little bit loose. You would adjust it forward and aft to get it to where you have the proper sear engagement, and then you just snug this down. Okay. So the nice thing about that is no hammering in your trigger pins, easily field adjustable, field swappable, good to go. Okay. Uh, and you can see this is a trigger tech trigger. I run my triggers at about six ounces from a competition setting, which is considered really, really light uh, for most. So let me think, what have we missed here? So we said integral rail, integral lug, fat bolt design. We've gone over the adjustable trigger hanger. You saw how easy it was to put it in, how it fit in the grooves and slid forward and locked in place. Uh, so maybe let's go over the bolt here for a minute. So I'm going to set this out of the way for a second. And let's talk about the bolt. So again, we showed you the cantilever bolt handle. And that is a super heavy spring, so you don't feel it when you actually lift. Uh, but it's field strippable, right? So we all run into it. We Something happens in the field. We need to tear the bolt apart. And so all you do is you slide this plunger up. And then let's see which way we want to rotate it here. Rotate it that way. Comes out. Okay. Uh, as far as changing bolt heads, simple as pushing this pin out, pulling off the bolt head, change a different bolt head. So if you want to go to a 223 or you want to go to a magnum bolt head, it's as simple as that. Uh, really straightforward. Nothing to do on the bolt uh, on the firing pin assembly itself. And then last but not least, what we want to cover is, so this is the pivoting design. Say you want to switch out to the other bolt handle. It's actually really simple. Well, you're going to see, I'll say it's really simple, but it's nothing more than pulling it back, bending it back. You get it out. There's the spring in the inner piece. All right, so we're going to switch this over to the normal extraction style. You got a little nub on the front side of this bolt handle. Put it through. Put the trout back in, firing pin. There's a little notch here. Not sure if you can see it. Push. And you're good to go. That's it. That's as easy as it gets. Okay. So now when we put this back in the action, make sure we got everything here. Now you're back to your normal, what you're used to extraction style, okay? And what I mean by that is this bolt handle has a little nub. It will hit your extraction cam surfaces up here just like normal. And that's what will, let me see if I can get here. Pull the bolt back, okay? So you don't have that pivoting bolt handle anymore. Standard bolt. Change it out in a matter of a minute, okay? So if we were to go back to the pivoting style, all right, we'll put this down, push the plunger, oops, rotate it the wrong way, see how easy it is to go back, rotate it, pull it out, pull the handle out, dump the spring back in, there's a little angled surface here, push that back through. And then we can put this bad boy back in. And the nice thing is, fits in, pull it back, kind of wiggle it around a little bit. Make sure I got it the right way. There we go. It's in. 
Put the firing pin back in. Just like before, there's a little flat here. Line it up. Push. And it is back together. So that's all it takes to change it out between the different bolt styles. Oops, just put it on safe. Sorry. Um, you gotta line up the oops, here. There we go. And we are now back to the prior style. All right. So now I said this is a six ounce trigger. I'm gonna tilt the camera up a little bit. Okay. So again, six ounce trigger. A lot of times it's very easy to get slam fires. I'm running that as hard as possible. So look, I mean, this is just a stellar action. I mean, there's no other action on the market that I've seen. And I've been shooting competitively for 12 plus years that has anywhere near the features that this has. And the cool thing about it is the price point in this is $899. So if you can find an integral lug, integral rail action with a trigger hanger, an adjustable trigger hanger for $899, I'm actually going to say you can't do it. Uh, let alone all of the other features with the fat bolt design, three lug, interchangeable bolt heads, uh, and the different options for ex you know extraction options. Uh, that it just can't be beat, in my opinion. Uh, I'm really excited about running this. The one thing that we haven't called out on here is I believe that the action tenon on the or the action on this. I'm sorry. I believe the uh, barrel on this has a coned tenon on it, a cone chamber face. So what that means is you're actually going to have better feeding, right? So instead of having a normal action where you've got kind of the little chamfered entry into the chamber, you have a bit of a, you have a cone, right? So the, the round's going to have just that much more ability to slide up in. Works with AIs, works with AWs, uh, controlled round feed. Um, yeah, I mean, this thing is just amazing. I, I can't wait to put a barrel on it and start running it. Uh, these have been in the works for, I can tell you that, uh, I think the first conversation I had with Ted on this action was almost three years ago, if not a little bit longer. So uh, there was no corners cut on this. These things are just amazing, and I cannot wait to run them. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be more than happy to you know answer anything for you. I've been running Nucleuses and Archimedes for years. Uh, I truly believe that Ted makes one of the safest and most robust actions out there. Um, and again, if you have any questions, let me know. Hope you like the review. And this is the American Rifle Company Coup de Gras. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.